Hello and thanks for joining us. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr and Yoko Ono are among those remembering John Lennon this week on the 40th anniversary of his death. A sad, sad day, wrote McCartney, who was Lennon's songwriting partner, friend and often artistic rival in The Beatles. Lennon was shot dead in New York on the 8th of December 1980 by Mark David Chapman. He remains in custody after repeated requests for parole. Fans gathered at New York Central Park to pay tribute to him. I was in uh, junior high and um, my uh, you know, mother came in uh, to the room uh, and said, you know, John Lennon was shot and uh, I just couldn't believe it. It was, uh, it was one of those stunning uh, moments where you always remember where you were. I do remember the night that it happened because I heard ambulances going by my window. I live in the city not far from here. And then the next day, when I learned what happened, it was just awful. His music, his life, his messages, in, in a way that we are, after 40 years he, he, he passed away, we are here to, you know, inspire by him to, to remember all, all he's done. One of the great treasures in music history, Bob Dylan's entire catalogue of songs has been acquired by Universal Music Publishing Group for an undisclosed sum. The catalogue includes modern standards like Blown in the Wind, The Times They Are Changing and Knocking on Heaven's Door. It's a body of work that may only be matched by the Beatles for its breadth and influence. So what was the deal worth? You can look at other transactions, you know, if Imagine Dragons is $100 million, if Stevie Nicks is $100 million, what's Bob Dylan? And the answer is, it's almost impossible to say because it, it's like the Hope Diamond. You don't really compare it to other diamonds. Is it twice as big as another diamond? The point is, there's only one of them. What's the, what's the catalog that's most comparable to the Dylan catalog? Maybe Springsteen, but Dylan is... I, I think even Springsteen would say this, far and above. Now, renowned jazz trumpeter Ibrahim Malouf has been lifting people's spirits with a concert in Beirut, bringing life to an area battered by Lebanon's economic meltdown and the catastrophic port explosion in August. The French Lebanese artist has also put an album out in tribute to the country. Emerald Maxwell reports. <laughs> Just the phrasing of the trumpet and rhythm of the guitar. Ibrahim Malouf is revisiting his melodies in the most stripped back way possible as a duet. It's a long way from the large orchestras he's used to. I would never have imagined making such an intimate album. I always thought I had to stuff a lot of things into them, arrangements, orchestrations. Going back to basics isn't that strange given the current context, which is both fascinating and tiring. The trumpet player has won over a large audience, collaborating with artists from wide-ranging genres. From Sting to jazz artist Wynton Marsalis, hip-hop musician Oxmoor Puccino. He began to forge his own path while still at the Conservatoire in Paris. His professor says he was a free-spirited student. He wanted to start asserting his musical personality, which was already emerging at the time. Ibrahim's first music teacher, though, was his father, Nassim Malouf, also a trumpet player. Ibrahim takes us to the church in Paris where Nassim was the sacristan. My father engraved his name here. He gave me daily lessons. It was important for him to teach me how to play Western classical music and Arabic classical music on the trumpet. He even invented a specific instrument. He still uses this special trumpet with its four vowels instead of three, giving an oriental feel to his music. 
It can be heard on his latest album, which pays tribute to his native country, Lebanon. Four months after the deadly explosion struck the port of Beirut, Ma'alouf put on a charity concert for the battered city. Because of what's happening now in the region and in Lebanon, I mean, it, it makes it even more important to, to be here to play music in the streets, in the venues and in everywhere. With his music, Ma'alouf hopes to help revive his beloved Lebanon, currently in the throes of economic collapse. His Beirut gig follows a charity concert in Paris in October, in which he raised some 2 million euros for the Lebanese people. As the pandemic continues to stand in the way of filming here in France, the popular soap opera Plus Belle La Vie, or Life So Sweet, has had to turn to cutting edge technology to get round the absence of a self-isolating cast member. The show, which is set in the southern city of Marseille, called on the help of an anonymous French YouTuber specialised in the art of deep fake, a technique which allows faces to be superimposed onto bodies. Catherine Kadir Clifford has more. A modern illusion of smoke and mirrors. Contrary to appearances, the actress Melika Alaoui didn't physically appear in this scene. Her face was superimposed onto a different actress's body. Plus Belle La Vie used the technology to continue filming when Malika, on the right, became a Covid contact case. The technique is called deep fake, and anonymous YouTube account French Faker has become a specialist. He's able to superimpose any face onto any film scene. For example, here is the head of far-left French Union, the CGT, facing down French President Emmanuel Macron. I took all the images of the actress who couldn't be present on set. I got the machine to memorize her face and I stuck it directly onto the replacement actress's face. It took me a week to 10 days to finish just over a minute's deep fake. For the soap, this costly technology must remain a last resort to be used with caution. Two years ago, a manipulated video of Barack Obama showed technology can now make anyone President Trump is a total and complete dip appear to say now. anything. This year, we've done more and more things from the comfort of our own home with businesses and services reinventing themselves to suit lockdown. First, it was school, fitness classes and theatre shows. Well, now a magician has adapted his act to perform remotely while keeping it interactive. Here's Emerald Maxwell. Tonight, the Bedeau family is taking part in a world first. Live from Montreal, Luc Langevin's new digital and interactive magic show is being streamed into 180 homes. A ticket to spectate costs 25 euros, but for twice that, the Bedeaux are part of the premium audience, able to interact personally with the magician. <laughs> Ulysse, I'd like you to pick a card. Any card you like. OK, the nine of clubs. Ulysse, this card here is a seven of spades, but as I'm a magician, I might be able to transform it. There, nine of clubs. Merci. <laughs> Canada and Quebec aren't next door to France, yet it feels like Luke is right here in front of us. The immersive experience was thought up by illusionist Luc Langevin during lockdown in Montreal. It's my warehouse, my workshop and now my virtual theatre. It's here he keeps all the gear for his tricks, but now there are also cameras. This is where I start the show in front of a long corridor. I do the first trick using the corridor. It doesn't go very far, but oh well. And I speak to the audience by looking at this lens here. Throughout the show, I'm the one operating the camera, so I turn it, and that's how we go from one act to the next. There are about 30 acts in all. In one of them, Ulysse chooses a card, a sport and a name, only to find that Luke has predicted all of them in an email he sent half an hour earlier. If you've received the email, open it now. Wow, that's incredible. Amazing. It's exactly what we said. Soccer, the Queen of Hearts and Alice. 
But he's in Canada. How does he do it? It's amazing. It was really worth it, and it was a lovely evening spent as a family. The 180 tickets for Langevin's first show sold out in just a few hours, bringing a touch of magic to homes as 2020 closes. Could all do with a bit of magic at the moment. We're going to leave you with the Christmas lights in Venice. Italian artist Fabrizio Plessi has lit up San Marks Square with his new designed Christmas tree. He hopes it'll bring positivity and good cheer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. You have enjoyed your program with Air France Protect, promising you a pleasant trip with total peace of mind. Kapisa is a province in eastern Afghanistan. Between 2008 and 2012, France sent hundreds of soldiers there to help the Afghan army fight the Taliban. More than 50 of them lost their lives. France also financed hospitals, schools and clinics. But what's it like in Kapisa now, eight years after the French left? Our reporters have been there to talk to people about their daily struggles and the ever-present threat from the Taliban. Don't miss Kapisa Revisited on France 24 and France24.com. With all the main European news, debates between representatives of the best and worst performing EU member states and exclusive interviews with major personalities. Talking Europe, presented by Catherine Nicholson, on France 24 and France24.com.